So uh, today I'm going to talk about make a fill. So this is a Python package um, that uh, we worked on at Crypto Week on Lab. Um, this package contains uh, essentially a model of the Falcoin economy. So allows users that to provide a few parameters that encodes um, some behavior of uh, uh, storage onboarding. And then based on those parameters, it simulates uh, a few uh, metrics about the, Fal the Falcon economy. Um, and in particular, is focused on circulating supply um, and the components that make up circulating supply, which is how much fill is being minted, how much fill is, is vesting, how much fill is being locked, and how much fill is being burned due to gas usage. So this will be a demo. So if things break, um, it's a demo, so it's fine. Um, and I'm just using here a Jupyter Notebook from um, Google Collab. So uh, we can share the link afterwards and anyone can run it and, and, and play with the code. Um, and so here I'm just installing. So this can be installed via a pip, which is a common uh, way for Python packages. And while uh, it uh, is being installed, um, I'll just say that this is the uh, repository for, for our code. You have here uh, more information about each parameter, what the parameter means, um, how to use it, a few examples, and then some references at the end. And we also have here some notebooks that we can uh, you can run locally instead of just um, running here on the Google Collab. So it was installed, um, and now we are just loading um, the package, which is Mechafill, and a few others um, that are relevant. And so the first step is defining the parameters for the model. Um, so I'll go over each parameter and what the parameter means. Um, so the the um, the first few parameters are related to time. So when do we want to run the simulation? So we need to provide the current date. Um, so this is essentially used for um, collecting past data that we need to start the simulation. Um, we can also provide a start date, and this means that you can run simulations in a, a, a date that is past the current date. And the reason for this is if we want to do some backtesting and, and do uh, scenarios of what the economy would look like in the past, we can have a start date that is um, later than the current date. If we want to do just forecasting into the future, we need to... Uh, um, have uh, a start date that is at, at most two days um, before the current date. And this is because we need to collect some statistics to restart the simulation. And so once we define the start date and the current date, then we define how many days we want to forecast into the future. And so how much, how many days will be model starting from the current date? Okay, and so here we are just starting at the start of December of this year, and we are um, forecasting one year um, ahead. The next is what is the daily power being onboarded? And here we are uh, referring to the raw byte power. Um, and this is measured in uh, pips. Um, and there's two options here. You can either give uh, just a single number, as we have here in the example. And if you give a single number, this means that for the entire forecasting period, so this uh, year that you are forecasting in the future, you'll assume that every day this is the amount of new raw byte power being onboarded, okay? But you can also give a, a, a vector of numbers. So instead of giving a single number, you can give a, a list. And um, here, this means that you have more flexibility. So you can encode other assumptions, like, for instance, imagine that the raw byte power is increasing a little bit every day, or it increases and then decreases. So you can model different uh, behaviors of onboarding for the future. But for this example, we'll start just with the simplest one, which is assume the same level of onboarding. And here we are assuming 10 pips per day. The next one is the renewal rate. So this is the percentage of power that is scheduled to terminate that instead of terminating, renews. 
So uh, when a sector is onboarded in Filecoin, um, it has a period of time that is being committed. And when that period runs out, the uh, storage provider has the option of just uh, letting the sector expire or they can renew the sector. And so this is essentially the percentage of raw byte power from the power that is scheduled to expire, how much is being renewed. Okay, so the, the, the more power that is being renewed, this means that the more power the network is retaining every day. As with the um, power here, the, the second parameter, this one can also be a number or a vector, okay? And then we have the fill plus rate. So this is the percentage of power that is being onboarded. So from these 10 pips that is being onboarded every day, how much uh, of that power includes fill plus deals? Okay. And again, this can either be a number or a vector. And here we are just assuming 10%. And finally, we have sector duration. So uh, another choice that, that um, storage providers have is when they are onboarding the sector, for how long are they committing the sector? Um, and here, this is controlled by these duration parameters. So here you are assuming that all new sectors that are being onboarded, they are being onboarded with a duration of one year. And this can only be one value. So you cannot provide here um, a vector. So it's just all sectors have the same duration. So as you can see, these are all the parameters. So we simplified a lot uh, what type of behavior we can encode in this model and um, to make it as simple to use and interpret as possible. But of course, this is um, a simplification, right? In the end, you have different storage providers coming in with different durations, different renewal rates. So this is a, a model that tries to simplify all that into a set of parameters that then you can tweak and uh, run scenarios with, okay? So once these parameters are fixed, then we can just run the model. So here we are using these run simple sim. We are putting in all the, the parameters we defined and then the result comes in a data frame, okay? And here I'm just selecting, so this data frame will include um, more statistics than what is being shown here, but I'm just selecting the ones that I talked about previously. So we have for each day, what is the circulating supply? What is the uh, the Falcon being minted, being vested, being locked, and then being burned? And then we can do some visualizations. Um, so here you can see that um, we have here the 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 main assumptions of how much power is being onboarded, the renewal rate and fill post rate. Um, and then we have here all the components for circulating supply. So the fuel that is being mined and vested, they contribute positively to circulating supply. So this means that they are increasing circulating supply and so they are positive. On the other hand, the fuel that is being locked or burned, they reduce circulating supply and so they contribute negatively to the final circulating supply. And so we have here, if we add the mine and vested, and then we subtract locked and burn, we get this value for circulating supply for one year ahead. And this is all there is to it. Um, you can then use different functions to just model specific parts. So if you just want to see the power being onboarded, or if you just want to see the, the, field that is being mined, we have specific functions. So then you, if you don't want to run the full simulation, you can dig in and use just some parts of it. And you can also play with different parameters and see what would be the impact of changing specific um, values there. So for instance, here we have an example where instead of having a renewal rate of 40%, we assume we have perfect renewal rate. So all the sectors are renewing every time. Um, but all the other um, values are the same. And here we can see that, so it's running the, the simulation and then building up the plots. Um, you see that it doesn't look very different in terms of my mind fill and vested fill. The, the big change here is how much fill is being locked. So again, because sectors 
are renewing more. They are being, uh, they are not exiting the, the, the network. And so that field is, that was locked on those sectors is not being released. And so we have more field being locked and this decreases a little bit circulating supply. But then we can also have an example here where instead of giving a single value for the onboarding power, uh, for the power being onboarded, we can give uh, a vector. And here we are assuming that uh, we start with the initial 10 pips and then we grow a little bit every day. OK, and we can see how circulating supply would would change. And you can see that when the plot shows, OK, again, here we see now a bigger change. So now we are growing our network even faster. And this means that we are locking even more fill. And this means that the circulating supply then starts decreasing. Okay. And so this is uh, what you can do with this model. You can uh, play with different values and then see what would be the impact on the different um, components of circulating supply. And once again, if you want to read more about how this model is designed, the main assumptions, uh, you have here the links. You can also go to the um, to our repo, install it, play with it. Um, and I will want to just finish by thanking Tom and Kieran. They were uh, they worked a lot on this um, model with me, and so they 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 are not presenting today. Kieran is here, so if if you want to give a shout out, uh, he's here as well. Um, but uh, they were a great help here. So thank you. Wow.